Right, so now that we have explained all about Moose and about where to find the information and reference material and all of that, now is the time come to actually explain you and build some quick missions through demonstration to actually bring you on board and show you the different capabilities of the Moose framework with some simple examples. There are more detailed examples uh, at the different uh, respective playlists of the modules, but uh, what I'm trying to do here is actually to combine a couple of things. And not like in the Gore Valley video series where there's a vast mission created, rather create small missions and just show you some stuff that you can do, but from a mission context, from a fun context. Okay, so here's mission one. I'm using now DCS World 2.1 because 1.5.7 is a mess. So, mission editor. Alright, so let me free you before I start from a disappointment. To do a quick mission design is actually, well, um, if you use purely the mission editor and you set up some targets and you're going to fly and you shoot them, yeah, then probably that's really very funny. But if you want to create a multiplayer mission and you want to have a lot of dynamism in your mission and there's something more that you need to do. And scripting is a solution and Moose provides you a couple of solutions to do that. And you'll see that it's not a lot of work, a little bit more, but the reward is that you get a dynamism in your mission and that you can do things that with the simple mission editor well, are simply impossible to do. So I think the first thing that I'm going to set up in this scope of this mission is I'm going to create around four um, routes here of moving targets that are moving into the zone and going to park somewhere around these flat areas here. And we're going to, you know, we're going to engage from, from uh, Las Vegas or Creech or something. We're going to fly into the air. And we're going to engage with those targets that are moving up into these areas here. And the answer to that is a spawn class for the moment. Later I have the strategy to build an, um, an air to ground, sorry, no, a ground to ground module that actually will create for you a dispatcher of AI to penetrate certain zones and to find their own way and so on and so on. But for the moment, Spawn is the solution to create dynamism in your missions around planes, but especially a ground, uh, around ground troops. So how do I do this? Very simple. Let me set up um, a couple of uh, well, a couple of ground forces here. The first thing that I need to do is to set up the relative route of where these uh, more or less where these troops are going. And this can be done very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a ground force uh, around Tonopah Test Range Airfield. Um, and these will be of country US Air Force aggressors. These are AG will be prefixed as aggressor and then a minus sign. And then I do ground force number one. I Put them, if you do hash box 001 here and do it on the unit name as well, and there's something useful that the mission editor can do. You could do control C on the object and you do control V and you cut and paste these uh, elements. And then when you look at them, you see here that the number has increased. So you just copy this, uh, you know, hash mark 001. When you start from there and it will automatically increase the number bet with each uh, paste. What I'm doing here, I'm not placing really uh, APC AAV7s um, of US Air Force aggressors. I'm actually going to place here late activated units like this. And I am going to give these guys a route to where, you know, to where these would be going within this uh, fast space. So, in order to do that, I need to do be something really careful. That is, before you start, you ensure that this is set to the maximum level 
72 and that's why I take an APC because they can drive the fastest um, here as well 72 right this one 72 and this one 72 good and now I'm going to build the roots I'm going to do this for the first template and then the rest I will do offline as a step so what I'll do is here, I do add, and then I'm going to, the good technique is to get your forces fast somewhere, is to try to let them drive on the road, right, as much as possible. So let's assume that the first infantry I will drive, I don't know if there's a road around the Air Force, yes, and there's even here, they can go there, and I want to get that force as soon as I can somewhere well let's say around here yeah so how do you do that you do very simple I'm going to the nearest road I'm doing on the road as a waypoint it, it takes a while in 2.1 because there are many many roads and he's gonna fetch the roads and determine the shortest route which is oh, what's this no this is wrong let me delete that point here right so now I'm here and now I can go and go to the furthest road that I can go to for example here then I do one more this one I'm going to do off-road and actually I would like them to drive in a V formation so I'm I'm actually well it doesn't matter at this point really what that formation is um, yes it does I apologize yes so here here and you know let's drive around till here somewhere good so that's that the next one let me get some overview the next one I would like to get here how to do same thing so get the roads and try to get them as fast as possible there so I want to get a, a troops here I want to get a troops here and I want to get a troops there if at all possible I don't know how high this stuff is here altitude uh, it's four four five hundred meters increase maybe there's a road somewhere that they can cross here yeah, here so I'm gonna take this road and go there excellent okay so let me do this and I'll be back right so now that I have set up all of this these are the routes what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create random templates so various templates that define the different battalions of these uh, of these these setups here so that for example you'll see a visual uh, representation of these battalions here in, a, in an array and gradually these battalions will spawn in and will drive up the route towards their zone and then at the end point they will search for a random location at an area here where they will settle and I can control or you can control the amount of targets that will be there the type of targets that will be there and so on and the way to do that is using templates and I'm gonna make one template and then you see how it works and then you can uh, quickly um, you know then we can quickly uh, I can quickly make the other templates and skip a few things so a very smart way to do is to actually um, rename this so ground template and again with the trick 001 you can Control A, Control C copies everything, and we're here with Control A, Control V, you copy that in here. Um, the templates need to be late activated, and they can be consisting out of multiple, um, yeah, multiple units. I'm going to use the um, US Air Force aggression here, yeah, and I'm going to build here an air defense unit that is consisting out of 
um, let me call this for the moment coops yeah so here some launchers an str let me get back there a launcher and another launcher okay so that, that defense system now has been set up here as a template now I can quickly copy the other stuff in so that the names are okay all right and now this I'm going to copy here but now I'm going to select you always need to look into this now you see that the unit names have moved up and the, the group name has moved up and now I can create different kind of units here for example uh, Strella or Oza yeah and then accompanied by some BMPs for example right for example this BMP3 that's a good one and this takes a while to build up all these templates um, yeah so now let me do the rest I'm gonna build around eight of these templates okay so see you in a minute right so these templates have been defined they may not have the correct military relevance when you look at these templates later but this is for demonstration purposes now what I would like to do is I would like them to be attached to these positions here and draw them as an array this way so that uh, gradually over time in a controlled manner um, a random selection from these eight templates will be chosen and will be driving on the route uh, dedicated and for that we need to do some scripting so I'm using the spawn class for that so we have air to ground template 08 here and we have we have the yeah sorry that these are the templates and these are the uh, routes okay so it's actually a piece of cake to do that um, I'm going to use the templating for this I've created a directory um, here dynamic ground forces <coughs> excuse me and I'm first going to make a list of all the templates that I've defined so we have eight templates and they need to be they have a name a group name and I need to attach them to the uh, spawn objects so nothing from moose yet just a list of the names of the templates I can do this very quickly by doing the following air to ground and I do like this uh, sorry aggressors ground templates equals and then I create a hash mark uh, you know brackets sorry so these brackets here curly brackets or curly braces we call them they are um, indicating a declaration of an array and I'm going to create an array of strings I can do this very quickly I switch to my mission editor I select the first mission here yeah. like this I do control A control C I go back to my editor and I do control V and now I am sure that this is in my editor correct then I separate each string in the list with a comma and I need to have around eight of those and they will all start with an individual uh, name ended with a number like this so these are the eight templates and the last one shouldn't get a comma so these are the templates for the aggressors and now I'm gonna create four spawn objects that are gonna attach those those templates towards each spawn object and I'm gonna add parameters to make these spawn objects behave in a certain way and that's the reason why we created spawning so what I'm going to do now is going to take this group here right so I'm doing AG 
underscore, oh, excuse me, aggressor underscore ground underscore spawn equals, sorry, 001 underscore spawn equals spawn double point. I remember in the first tutorial what I said. Everything should be IntelliSensible, correct? So also this. And now it doesn't work, but it will be. It's still compiling. New. So I'm just going to do the new with prefix and then between quotes, double quote, this is the string, remember, as I explained in the tutorials of Lua, now I am pasting here the group name as the reference. Let us look at what new takes. New takes for easy. Uh, remember this, the self, this is really the spawn class here that's been given, so that's none of relevance, but this is the key um, thing you need to look at, right? So creates the main object to spawn a group defined in the mission editor. So what you do is you give the spawn template prefix. This is the name of the group in the mission editor that defines the template. Each new group will have the name starting with spawn template prefix. And the return value is a spawn object of type spawn. And here's an example of how to use it. Okay, so we did it, we did the same, and in this variable now, there will be a spawn object stored. Great. Now, since we have that object, I can now say a few things. So I can now do underscore 001, underscore spawn, and if that is too long to type, you can do control space, and you get the list of the objects that are corresponding with this name and you can select the one and it goes automatically and when I press now again double point I would like to call a method that is underneath the spawn object and since this is of type spawn I get all of these spawn methods listed here of the class and there are many now you need to understand how spawn works and for that I suggest you look at the documentation so the first thing you need to do is to initialize um, the amount of methods, the amount of groups that we want to spawn, and the amount of units that we want to have alive at the same time. And the method to do that is called init limit. And I'm going to double click on this and it will automatically paste in here. Init limit has these, uh, you know, this is the manual of init limit. All right. So what we have is spawn the maximum units alive and spawn the maximum groups alive. This is these are two numbers. What will happen in the mission editor is that when a spawn happens, one of these templates will be spawned, and in a group of four, in, you know, at the same time, new units will spawn in. So I want to have a maximum of twelve units alive. That means that the maximum of three groups will be spawning. But I want to have a reservoir or a resources of around 40 groups. That's 40 times 4. That's 160 units that are allocated to this spawn object here. Okay. Now I'm going to do another one. Another method. And now that I have the limit, the next thing that I want to do is to say I want to init, and every initialization method for spawn class starts with init, I want to randomize the templates. And this is here defined. So for that, I take, you know, what this takes, you know, is a string, actually a table of strings of the names of the groups defined within the mission editor, a table, right? So I take this, I paste this here and done. 
this is it the next thing air to ground if, if it takes too long to type you can also just copy it yeah that's what I do copy it and then you do in it what I want to do now is I want to randomize the route I want to let them follow the road but at the last point I want them to deviate and go to a random position within the battlefield in a range for that I am putting the randomize route at work which is a very interesting method let's have a look at the uh, characteristics Maybe I can resize that a bit right so we have a start point an end point a spawn radius and a spawn height which is, which is optional the start point is the waypoint where the randomization begins so the note that the start point is zero I want uh, no randomization at all right so I want to have um, a randomization at the last waypoint and then we have the waypoint where the randomization ends counting backwards so how do I do that well then I need to look into my mission and I need to count the amount of nodes that I have for each route so here I'm having um, how many we look around seven okay so I will have here a start point randomization of seven and I will have an endpoint of zero and that will create a randomized experience at the last waypoint and I want them to go to you know a radius around eight kilometers at random at the end good the next thing that spawn can do is it can create an array of you know a visual array of these battalions so now I'm going to do the using the method init um, where is it init array here we are this is a little bit complicated right but uh, there are demonstration missions that you can look into videos really on the spawn class so here we have a couple of parameters an angle a spawn width a spawn delta and a spot x and a spawn delta y this is very interesting so the spawn angle is going to be um, the angle that you want to have and it's a very interesting and very easy method to do that you just take the start point and you do this I want them to be pointed this way and the mission editor will tell you in degrees more or less the direction that needs to be followed 330 degrees so I'm taking this and I'm writing here 330 degrees right spawn with spawn X spawn Y okay cool and here I am saying for a spawn with since I have four battalions and let's assume that each ground object is um, around let's say 10 meters apart then I'm saying here that I'm having 50 meters width uh, to be reserved um, is this correct is this in meters let me have a look here I don't think that was in amount of groups that will be positioned on the x-axis right so that's something else so I want to say I'm going to position let's say two groups here but on the x-axis I will have around uh, 50 and the y-axis around 10 meters I think that should be okay we, we need to test that I'm going to have a view on that later uh, or actually no, later first thing that I'm going to do is to look at the scheduled spawning so now scheduled spawning is also an interesting one so now I want to spawn there are many spawn methods but there is one interesting one and there's a spawn scheduled so here you can say I want to spawn new groups 
at a regular interval every let's say here you know uh, 360 seconds for example with a spawn variation of around 0 0.8 so 80 percent and for that i suggest you have a read through this api here what that means so now i have that and now i'm going to import this script into my um, into my mission How, just the method that i explained before using the tutorial. So I'm creating a first you know, mission start. This is done very easy. Huh? This is not really difficult. And you can see that when you do scripting, um, I explained that you can you know, cut and paste your scripts in the mission editor, but you will find yourself very quickly to be just importing your scripts from a file. It's much easier, much more user-friendly to, to use and so on and so on. Okay, oh, I'm, I've done a mistake. It was moves I needed, not this one. So I need to go back, go to the moves, mission, moves.lua, great. Next one. Now I'm going to go again to mission start and I'm going to load the mission now. And how do I do that? I go, script file, open go back into my shortcuts and I really suggest you have a read through the video around shortcuts that I explained in one of the tutorials because this is um, yeah this is also very interesting material to to understand how to set that up so that's that and now I'm gonna test all right so let us have a look at what this thing has done. Here you see the array being created. The units are visible at start and it's really a beautiful sight. You see these units here standing. Yeah. Um, and you can, yeah, you can really see those other units driving on the road right now as they move up towards their uh, their goal. And that's what we wanted, right? So let me complete the other ones quickly. I'm going to do some cut and pasting there and then we can get to the next point in this tutorial. Right, so I've done the cut and paste. I've done some intelligent modification um, and I think I'm going to keep the same parameters like this so there won't be at any point in time, 4 times 12, which will be around 48 units, ground units, alive at the same time. And looking at this type of units, this is going to be really, you know, a tough job because there's a lot of uh, SAMs uh, in there. So we will need seeding and some uh, ground uh, attacking. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create um, my air bases. I'm going to put some clients in there to start attacking the enemy okay now the first thing that i would like to deploy is helicopters but we don't want to have helicopters too far from um, the enemy here that are is expected to be deployed somewhere in the area here so let's say a takeoff from groom lake if we take that into measurement here that would easily bring us around you know a flight of 60 kilometers with a helicopter that's doable but it takes a flight at least 20 minutes to get there and then uh, do some shooting and then get back so it's um, for testing you know it's useful if you really have a long-term mission for an evening but um, it's not really funny so what i'm going to do i'm going to put the farb here i think it's better or oh, where is that structure yeah and i'm not gonna how can i say oh fuck great bye bye video
Let me see if I have that mission still. Come on. It's going to be a long night today. I think I should build some some high level classes that allow you to you know deploy this kind of stuff in an easier way but since you want to keep the flexibility you know it's really about using the methods on the classes and making sure you put the parameters right and everything to really create this immersive uh, experience here yeah? well, I could randomize some things and I don't know Come on. Loading takes me two minutes. And I'm still the mission editor. And this is a fast machine, this one, I guarantee you. Right, now well, I hope I have saved my mission. I think I didn't. Oh my god, I hope I have saved it. Yes, I did. Excellent. This is good. Okay, so we can continue our session. Let me retry this. So, to put a farb behind the mountains somewhere here. Now it's doing it. Yes, Air Force aggressors. Let me put the FARP um, US FARP 001. Don't care. Somewhere here. Uh, not London, Dallas. Position it a bit like this. And I'm not going into the discussion on what is the best equipment to... No, what am I doing here? US. The best equipment and stuff to actually get it, you know, refuel and all that stuff. That's known, I think, by you. But this is the FARB. So I'm going to put a helicopter on here. Again, US. Uh, ELO. 001 and this is already important what I want to do is I want to create an attack squadron so I'm gonna make these um, names start with US minus attack and then what's there behind I don't care and the group names I'm gonna let start like this but also those and this would be clients and I'm gonna position them uh, a hot spot for the moment, otherwise it takes ages to take off and stuff. And huh? what's that? I can put a client of. Yeah, these are non flyable. So, okay, 50. I still need to get my modules registered, which I will do. So, pff, all of that, yeah, the radio and all of this, great. So, now here. I'm taking a weaponry and I'm going for the livery marines for the example. Okay. Good. And I'm going to take a few here. Right. I don't know if this is now correctly pasted. Two, three, four. Excellent. I don't need to put any waypoints, and you'll see immediately why. I just will do like this. And I'm going to put some Vigan here. Say a bit further at Creech. Some Vigan. Where are they? Here. Again, I'm going to do. US minus attack zero zero one oh, 
to begin. Zero zero one. Good. Put that here and make the vegan client. Put that at the airport. I'm gonna put again a hot spot. And here I'm gonna get into some other weaponry since we have a lot of a seed load wouldn't be bad I think to have right and let me put that a bit iterative all right so then I can change the liveries a bit like this no, not illumination hard targets perfect right and this one a strike no no strike rockets that will be good okay so that's it um so now we got some clients, we got some grand forces, they are coming up to this area. What I would like to do now is to create, and this is going to be fun, you don't know where the targets are coming from, you don't know where they are. I can go and do some routing here and planet and so on, but that's not what I want. I want to create a random experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the air to ground tasking mechanism to set it up. So in order to set up the tasking mechanism, I need an EWR network. And the best unit available to do that is a, is a wrap, you know, an airplane, a US airplane. So let me do this EWR. 001 like this and I'm gonna select for that the Reaper which is an excellent observation and AFAC uh, plane I'm gonna let it just fly in the air with a speed of 400 is fine I'm going to let it fly like this and, you know, far enough from the enemy and do a racetrack pattern until it's out of fuel and then it can land. How to do racetrack, orbit, right, and around an altitude of 2,000, yeah, that's fine, 200 kilometers per hour, why not? This is good. Now I haven't done really a lot, have I? I just created an EWR. I have my attack squadrons here, which are attack vehicles. And what I need now is I need some scripting. So how do you set up a... Um, a, a, a tasking mechanism well it's actually quite easy the first thing you need to have is a headquarters so let me put in a headquarters here it's very simple I'm going to put in a headquarters it needs to be a unit a ground unit sorry not a ship ground unit so US headquarters that's going to be the name that I'm going to use as the group name. And I'm going to put that up as a command center, command center. I can put here for all the complex, for all the completeness, 001. That's even better. And I'm going to use a fortification road outpost. Something like 
Yeah, for that I need some mods to actually see where that is placed, but for the moment I don't care. I'll put it somewhere here. Right? And this is my headquarters. For all safety, I would like to make my headquarters um, immortal, so that it cannot be killed by an enemy. So that's that. The next thing that I need to do is to do some scripting now. So what I would like to create is a command center. So I'm creating a US command center using the class command center double point new. And what do I need? I need a command center positionable and I need a command center name. The name I can give. Let me put the name command right can be easier what's positionable positionable is basically uh, it's a it's a class that is a you know positionable is a super class and anything below is okay group is derived from positionable so i can create a us headquarters object that is a group find by name and then as a group name I'm going to search for this name here so I do again control a control C and I paste it in here excellent so now I have a command center and a headquarters that variable that reference is being put as a parameter here Maybe I need to document that better because that's not going to be really user friendly. Great. The next thing that I need to create is a mission. So I'm using US mission one underscore mission one equals mission double point new. Ooh, a lot of parameters. But if you carefully look, it's not so difficult. I need a command center, which is this one. I need a mission name. Okay. Ground test or air to ground to training. Yep. I need a mission priority, which is a free format text field. It can be anything. For the moment, I'm going to put here training. No, not training. Let's put here primary, primary mission. A mission briefing, fine, we can write something up. And the mission briefing could be you've joined this training mission. Attack as many ground targets as possible. Um, and then I need a mission coalition which unfortunately, uh, fortunately we have, so it's a coalition object. And then when you do here, double point, that's not working. Uh, okay, I need to look that up a bit, but since I'm having some coding here, I can just look into that. How was it again? Mission, coalition, side, blue. I don't know why it's not working. I need to check that. Yeah, I know. I need to get that a bit better documented, but for the moment this will do. Okay. Coalition blue. That's that. So this is my mission object. And now the next thing that I need is I need, let's look at what the, what I need to do the uh, um, task air to ground dispatcher. What do I need? I need new task air to ground dispatcher. I need a mission. I have that. So M1. I need a set group. And what is that about the set group? The set of groups that join the task within the mission. So this is going to be my attack groups. So I'm doing US attack equals set group new ok 
Okay, and then here set group works with filters. So I do here filter. Um, what am I going to do? Filter coalition, I think. Yeah, filter coalitions, blue. And filter prefixes. And I'm going to filter on US. Remember the name here? That one. I always let it begin with US minus attack. So that's what I'm going to put in here. Right? And then filter start. Done. That's it. So I got my set group here as well. US attack which is this object and then I need what else do I need I need a detection hmm what is detection about detection the detection results that are used to dynamically assign new tasks to human players this is a detection base right so detection base when you look at that in the documentation you'll see that detection has quite a lot of capabilities so we make a detection how to do a detection so we do us detection equals detection underscore areas double point and now i'm going to create a detection with a detection set group that needs to be no, this needs to be the array. Why do I have two quotes here? The set of groups as the forward air controller role. So here, remember what I said? What I did? I created here this um, US EWR. So I'm going to create a set. It's very easy. US AFAC equals or us ewr equals set group new double point filter coalition blue filter prefix takes a bit to get used to this stuff I know it's not so evident that's why I'm making this video so that you understand now I can do this I can copy us EWR this is going to be my prefix string here so let me put that in okay and now it's still not filtering now I want to start the filter so I'm doing filter start so now the set group is filtering for EWR groups. And I can put that in here. US EWR. So that reference there, see the highlight is now taken as the input parameter and then a detection zone range. This is going to determine the grouping. So when multiple targets are being detected, what is the range that I'm going to use for the grouping? 1,500 meters sounds for me like a good range for grouping. And I need here then that US underscore. And then I need the detection, correct? Yes. And then that one is going to be my US air to ground task dispatcher voila I've created my script and it isn't so difficult but you need a good example I know this is not something you're going to do just from from the documentation so here's the example okay let me put that now into my mission script again so I'm going to re-import this right and fly yeah 
here, my friend. I will. Oh, I need to activate the KA50. So that's going to be a challenge because I don't have a KA50 yet activated. Let me, I know you're not going to like it, but I'm going to use the SU25Ts to do some seeding tasks into the system. But let me first boot it up. I hope it's going to work. Right, so I have this, but I can't really show you anything, so I need to cancel that. And I'm going to put in, I don't know, in Groom Lake maybe, a couple of SU25Ts. How do I do that? I just copy and paste there. And then I'm going to change the name. Right, SU25T. A small u copy no one all copy and then here paste and the type is going to be an su 25t which is going to be a georgia for the moment yeah here we are and i'm going to use a Seeding, come on, you gotta be kidding me, what's wrong? Okay, here we go again. Yeah, this is the most important. I just hope, uh, did I save my helicopters and everything? I think I did save, right? will be fine. That's why videos take so long. Yeah, mate, I know. I will. It is easy, but later, please. Um, it is beneficial you use the latest release version for testing. Okay. Let me get into the mission editor again. He, cool, good guy. Listen, it's not so crowded today. Yeah. Doing this area fifty one. Cool. Do I have everything? But not my SU twenty five T. No. But I do have my headquarters. Yes. Okay, cool. So let me do that again. Busy therapy, they call that. SU twenty five T. Copy, paste, I'm going to use a Georgian, yeah, that's going to be um, the palm seed, no I don't want to save the mission payload, thank you, and no man, oh, okay, I 
I saw that it crashed again. Okay, so here I'm going to use one of those just for testing. One is enough, right? Okay. So, that being said, saved. Now I'm going to run this again. But let me... Yeah, okay, cool. Let me run it now. Right, let me jump into this plane here. Because now magic will start. This is what you have been waiting for about an hour and a half. Sorry for this. I'm not going to edit this video file. I want you to see what I'm going through. Um, fly. Oh man, come on. Yeah, this is normal. So when you start the mission, the moose engine is creating for you all of the objects. So let's see what happens here in this mission. So I have here a couple of things that start to drive around and that's I'm very happy that this is taking place. Isn't it beautiful? But I have a disappointment for you. This very beautiful nice view is not working in multiplayer. It's impossible. It just doesn't work. And the reason is that there's a bug. So when tanks are visible before start and they get activated, they don't get synchronized to the clients. So the clients don't see those tanks at all. Really a silly error. Uh, Ed promised for a fix, but that's about a month ago. Let's see where it what's happening next. So we got that. The, these things are starting to drive around to their target and that's going quite fast. You'll see that the progression is going, you know, very fast, especially when they're off the, on the road. I got here my Reaper, which is airborne, right? And is detecting. I let him deliberately fly a bit flat because I want him to detect only when things are to be detected and they're a bit far away these uh, targets but they will be detected somewhere okay so I'm in my plane here and what I have here in my menu is I'm having a command center right of command so and there's nothing in there that's the reason because nothing has been detected yet no targets not a problem I'm just gonna wait until these things get detected and if not if it takes too long I will uh, need to put the Reaper a bit higher let me see where this thing is flying maybe it's too far yeah and there's some mountains there in the neighborhood right No, he's not going to detect that. I think this is too far. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this thing up a bit. How to do? It's very simple. I'm moving into 6,000 meters. Here as well. 6,000 meters. And here as well. 6,000 meters. And then in the, in the orbit task here, oh, did I put it here? And it's wrong. I need to put it there. So, orbit, race track, 6000 meters, that's fine. Let us rerun this. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that everything is working fine. So I got here my Glock logger and I have here my dcs.log that has been entered and I don't know what debug sounder do file is but um, I don't care right so let me get into the seed so now it's really creating a lot of stuff right right so here we are we're in the scripting he has created well I think quite a lot of units yeah database at group and once the register group template has done and the spawning has happened all of this comes out per unit don't know why but this is all looks all fine let's fly so now we have the reaper a bit higher and he's detecting and they're far away are the tanks and they're starting to drive around I don't know whether the Reaper is able to detect them, but we will see. Let me check if there is any error. No, this is all looking beautiful. In order to test, you can speed up. Control V. Okay, this is taking way too long. So let me put that here for the moment for the joke. So I'm here. Fly. Let me get back to the Reaper. Where is it? There. Good. And now I should see something at the airbase. Right, so now he's detecting stuff, which is good. And now comes the magic. So my Reaper has detected a seed 01, and he says contact the radio. So I'm going to F10, command, and now I see air to ground training mission primary, right? See that? So now I'm going into mission briefing so what's the mission briefing ah the mission briefing is i have joined a training mission and in the meanwhile the tasking has identified a, a battlefield air interdiction task that it has assigned okay so let me get back to command center and let me get some task reports give me the planned tasks here and I'm having a BAI, right, number two. And it has again identified a C01. So I'm going back, command center, give me the task reports. Right, so now I'm having a C001 again of two tasks. And the BAI is lost. This is normal, this can be. So. Okay, no problem. Now I have a C task. The reason is the BAI got converted into a C task. That's the reason why this, these uh, things change. 
So now I have two tasks, C01 and C02. And the reason is that here we have two tors yeah, at different locations. Okay, cool. So now I can engage upon one of these tasks. For example, join task seed 02 join. So now I get the message that I'm joined and I need to follow the route 306 104 kilometers and eliminate the target. Now let me do that. Let me fly a little bit because it's been very late and I'm And this was the end of mission one. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, tomorrow there's going to be a new day, maybe, for me to do to explain some things. But this day, I think, has been quite productive for me today. Um, this is the kind of things you can do with the Moose framework, and there's going to be more stuff uh, added in the near future. Um, I'm going to go further into this mission and document some other things that we can do with the Moose framework, step by step, in mission two, three, four, five, six. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.